How to deal with index bloat with Marcus Tandler from Wright. Brought to you by Majestic, I'm David Bain and this is SEO in 2022. Marcus, what is your number one SEO tip for 2022? Hey David, uh, first of all, thanks for the invite. Um, my tip is a very actionable one. It's how to deal with index bloat. Um, a preventive panda diet is quite common recommendation for websites which have gained a lot of fat throughout the years and are now struggling to increase their visibility in Google. A large amount of now irrelevant pages is the equivalent to empty yogurt containers which are being kept and stored because I might still need those in the future. Don't get carried away with this kind of digital compulsive hoarding. Keep your website fresh, tidy and clean. With all your pages, you should always ask yourself three simple questions. Do I need this page for my users? Does this page also need to be indexed by Google? And if yes, what should this page ideally rank for? Of course, you don't need to delete all pages which are not relevant for ranking purposes and still have a value for your users. Of course, users can still navigate to these pages, but be more rigorous about what should really get indexed. Let me give you an example. A faceted navigation for an online shop for shoes. Let's say the targeted keyword is Adidas Superstar. The Adidas Superstar is available in, let's say, 10 different colors and 10 different sizes. And of course, an interested user can navigate to any variation of these 100 different pages to put it into their virtual shopping basket. However, you don't necessarily want to let those 100 product variations get indexed, only the ones which are explicitly being searched for. So you might end up with a catch-all Adidas Superstar page with a displayed Superstar shoe in the best-selling color-size combination. And if there's a sufficient amount of Google searches for a specific combination, like for example a black Adidas Superstar, then it makes sense to grant this black Superstar its very own indexable page. This way, you can ensure a good ratio of relevant to irrelevant pages, reduce the possibility of cannibalizations, and therefore stay safe from Google's ponder. If your website is already full of these empty yogurt containers, it's advisable to preventively take out the trash, ideally with the help of server status code 410, gone, instead of the more common 404, since Google is revisiting 404 pages a couple more times, especially if the page has been sending a 200 before. While with a 410 status code, Google will only revisit this page one more time to make sure the page is really gone. Of course, you will also need to remove any internal links and or references to these now 410 pages. If you have amassed loads of these empty yogurt containers, which are now 410, and now you want to get those out of the index as fast as possible, you can consider using a negative sitemap, which, considers which contains only pages which are now 410. And this way you can remove even large amounts of irrelevant pages out of the Google's index very effectively. So I hope my quick tip resonated with you guys. And now I wish you all the best for cleaning up your website. Don't just do it. Do it right. <laughs> That's absolutely superb, Marcus. Uh, empty yogurt containers. You don't want any of them on your website. So um, <laughs> how does an SEO go about finding these empty yogurt containers on, on, on their website and defining what really is useful for users, useful for Google and, and a, a good potential page to rank for? Mm -hmm. As so how I would start take Google Search Console data and filter for all pages with clicks equals zero within a 12 months time frame. Then you take this list to Google Analytics and see if those pages are getting traffic besides from organic search. Ideally, as a third step, you should also compare this list with Googlebot behavior using log file data to see if Google is still regularly crawling these pages. Since the scheduler which sends off Googlebot to fetch pages prioritizes by importance, you can get a good sense if Google is finding any of these pages still important and therefore relevant. If any of these pages receive no organic traffic, nor any other sort of natural or paid traffic, and Google isn't even crawling those anymore, you can just get rid of them and thin out your website very easily. And you also talk about um, a good ratio for useful pages to these poor pages. What is a good ratio? Yeah, obviously this always depends on your website, right? I mean, like it depends on if you have 10,000 products, right? I mean, like it, 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 it always depends on, on the size and also basically like, like, like everything around it. So I, I wouldn't say there's like a, this is like the ideal ratio you should aim for. If something's relevant, it's relevant and it's okay, right? Um, 
But if you end up only with one page, then it's just one page. So it's really about thinning out everything which which is just not relevant. Um, and 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 I wouldn't really like like aim for a specific ratio or um, even have that goal, but really like have sort of like a blank sheet of paper and just let the data talk, right? Like no opinions, just data. Um, and you will easily find the ones which are not relevant anymore, which you can delete or um, still reserve for your users, but keep out of the index. It's sometimes easier to actually see what a search engine likes compared with what a user likes. Um, so how do you actually define what a user is likely to like? Is it simply based upon user behavior and things like the amount of time spent on that page? Or do you actually have to um, have a group of people analyze that page and really ensure that that page is relevant and appropriate um, as part of the buying cycle for your business? As I mean, like, obviously, what you uh, what you were referring to, the long click, right? I mean, like, the long click, this is Google's main goal, right? Um, so, obviously, somebody clicking through to your site, staying on your page, not just be like a one-hit wonder seeing just one page, but, but, but like, um, like, surfing through to your page, like, other pages from your site, um, which obviously is also a sign of quality, um, not going back to the SERPs, obviously searching some for something completely different um, after they visited your page. So you can see there was a search completion here. They really fulfilled this page, really fulfilled the intent. I mean, like, obviously, this is the most important part, but you got to start way earlier also with pages which Google um, basically promotes to the top 10 to really see, you know, hey, I think this page has everything I'm looking for, you know, in a, in a, in a top 10 result. Let, let's give it a try. Let's see if Google, if users find this page relevant. And the first sign of relevance, the first, before I can even evaluate sort of like the long click behavior, people need to click through, right? So this is the first sign of relevance for me that people click through to my site. And um, I might have the perfect page in my sense, and now I'm getting the top 10 test, but nobody's clicking through to my site, it is um, a clear indication that there might be a different intent here when people search for this. And, and this is just, while it's a great content, it's just not a great content for this intent. So I might need to investigate further what's the real intent behind this search query and how can I really make the best possible page to fulfill this intent. Um, so I think the, 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 the most important aspect for a modern SEO these days is really having the aspiration to, to not just rank in the top 10, but really be the best possible result for that specific query. Um, and David, you know, where we come from like 20 years ago, right? I mean, like you didn't care about that stuff. You just, you just rank and hopefully a lot of people come to your site and let's see what we do with that. And now this fund yeah. is flipped upside down. You really got to think about what do they want and only then you can be successful. So, so what typically is the most common cause of index bloat? Is it, mm -hmm. for instance, duplicate, duplicate pages caused by non-canonicals? Is it lots of sub-category pages? Is it um, old product pages or, or, or something else? Yeah, so I, I think the, the, the worst is always online shops, right? They have all these products which go out of stock and in, have in stock and all that kind of stuff. You have multiple categories. You, have, you don't have to have categories, but also tag pages and stuff like this. So there's there's a lot of stuff like, like just using a out-of-the-box CMS might create already these kinds of index plot problems by introducing like um, categories as well as tags, for example. So this can happen even to a blog. Also, this can really virtually happen to, to any site. Um, but, um, yeah, but, but, but it's especially, uh, but it's especially these pages with, which struggle the most, uh, with an explode, I would say. Yeah. Okay. One other thing that you mentioned, um, is that you can have a negative sitemap, um, for mm -hmm. four tens, which is, um, a, a great thing to do to, to deal with this. Um, but you also say, obviously you need to remove all links from your website to these pages. Um, if you have these URLs in your negative sitemap, um, and you're really struggling to remove, um, so many different links from your website, um, is it enough to redirect the, the links to something else? For example, if I have, I have an out-of-stock product, right? I mean, standard, standard recommendation would be re redirect those users to the category, to the according category that if they don't find this specific product, they still have uh, a, 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 a sort of like an inventory to choose from if they come to this page. But, but I don't think 
I don't really think this will help you in the long run because it's just not as relevant as other online shops which have that product in stock. So it really won't help you with ranking per se. So I would really just get rid of it, right? I mean, like this is exactly this empty yogurt container problem, right? That you want to keep something around because you might need it in the future. But I, I rather have it crisp and clean and right like compact uh, and this will always help your whole site um, because your structure is just just more compact um I mean, like, obviously, in um, there's a lot of edge situations where it might make sense, um, you know, to just d direct these links uh, anywhere. But but if it's really something where you now sending a server code for ten. You, you really don't want links and references to this, right? And the negative sitemap is really just to speed it up, really just giving Google an indication, hey, this is everything I want out, right? This is everything I've, I've basically, how I thinned out my website. Um, so, so Google, you can just go nuts, you know, hit them, see the 410 and just dropping, um, uh, dropping them out of the index. Um, and, and if those, if those still have links, Google might be inclined to go to these pages, right? Because why are you still linking to those? So, so I would really just get rid of all the links and references per se. Yeah, yeah you're you're giving Google multiple signals, aren't you? You're telling them yeah. um, <laughs> this is what my sitemap says, but Google doesn't necessarily know whether it can believe that if if you have multiple links to that page on your website. Yeah, and um, index bloat is a fairly technical term. So if you're maybe mm -hmm. training other marketing professionals on the value of dealing with index bloat, uh, would you typically use your empty yogurt cartons um, analogy as a way of explaining this or would you try and explain it um, another way? Oh, I, I'm always explaining it this way because it really like, it, it, it like a lot of people get this because I mean, this might be a German thing, right? But I'm just remembering my, my, my grandma, right? And she was really basically, she couldn't throw anything away. I mean, she wasn't a messy or a compulsive hoarder, right? But, but still, she would still have a lot of stuff around because she might still need it. And I think this is the same thing with, with website these days. And I think the problem is actually homemade. It's actually us SEOs which have created this problem. Because, David, 15 years ago, if somebody would come to us and say, hey, you know, my page is a thousand pages, um, what should I do? A lot of SEOs, me included, would have said, you know, you should have you should make it 100,000 pages. You should have a million pages, you know, for every possible um, keyword combination, right? Because that's what you needed back then because Google wasn't that good, like really, you know, uh, like, 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 like catching up with this. So, so we would have all these different keyword combinations that would make specific pages for this. And now Google is much smarter. You don't need this anymore. And you also... Um, Basically, you 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 basically uh, also um, uh, you, you 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 sort of like bleeding you bleeding your link juice so to speak because you 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 uh, distribute it to so many pages right so so these days it's it's really much more advisable to have a much more compact structure maybe even a single page application and Google is fine with that as well right um, but this is what I think so it's it's really a homemade problem all of us SEOs contributed to this problem by blowing up our websites to really catch every possible keyword combination and now Google becoming so much better at that and and also Google also had a different objective back then, if you remember, Google was always in the footer. They said, um, now 4 billion index pages, 5 billion index pages, 6 million index yeah. pages, because it was a red race with, with, with Microsoft and with Yahoo who has the biggest index, who indexes the most pages. But then Google really thought, well, it's it's not about the quantity anymore, and I can't keep up with quantity, especially when when social media came up, you know, with with Twitter and and Facebook. There's so many URLs created every single day that Google can't even keep up with that, and so Google really opted out of this red race, like trying to get as much index as much of the web, but only the most relevant stuff. So the in, uh, the more focus on on quality, and this is really when the panda came about. Panda actually tackling exactly this um all these pages that that have been more on the like that, that have that have blown up more on the quantitative aspect than on the quality side okay great so if an seo is in a fortunate position of um starting to work for a brand that's probably is just launching and they're actually involved in the design 
of the website to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. Is it better then for blog posts and for product pages just to have a single category and for any tags associated with um, each of those product pages um, to be completely non-crawlable, just non-indexable by, by Google? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. So obviously, I mean, categories and tags can help with, you know, like, um, like, like the Google crawler, like going through your website um, and also still linking to like older content, which might rank well. Um, but I would always opt for one sort of like indexable structure, like with categories, but then I would opt out of tags or um, a date um uh, as a, 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 a structure by by dates, like with the months or stuff like this, right? Like like really focusing on one structure. How I um, how how uh, how I would structure this. Um, and and the, the the biggest problem always comes with having too much of this. But again, this is something again some like the the, the empty yogurt containers. There's like oh, I'm also going to use the tags. I'm also going to use the date structure. You know, to 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 maximize the the internal links to all of these pages, right? But but what ends up happening is you basically link all over the place and you don't really direct Google to what's really important, you know, to what's really important for you um, and, and basically let, let Google do all the heavy lifting. So I, as an SEO, I always want to be as much in control as possible. So I'm, I'm really going to opt out all of this where Google needs to do the heavy lifting and, and really like, like, like structure the way that that I really tell Google this is what's important this is what I'm really good at this is my USP here this should ring really well right also um, this is where I provide the most value to the users so it's uh, yeah also like um, yeah going back to the drawing board and especially it's it's awesome when you can start as when you really can start doing this uh, and and not have to uh, like work with legacy stuff uh, which is always like a big pain obviously. Um, but it's great if you can start it, you know, on the drawing board and like really see where where do my content gets extended? How do I make it sure that that Google can crawl these pages and look really find the perfect structure for that um, without too many category tag, whatever. So if an SEO is um, on the opposite side of things and um, working for a business um, that's perhaps been around for 10 plus years and they know they've got index bloat, they haven't dealt with it and they're hearing you say this and thinking, Marcus, I absolutely need to spend more time doing this, but they haven't got much time. What's one mm. thing that an, an SEO may be typically doing just now, and they're just doing an autopilot, they've um, done automatically for the last five years or so, and it's not mm. as valuable now as it used to be. So what's one thing like that that an, an SEO needs to stop doing in order to spend more time focusing on index bloat? Mm -hmm. I mean, like obviously it, it always depends on the website and what the SEO is doing and if, it, if it's really important or not. But what, what I see a lot of big brands doing is instead of dealing with an export, for example, focusing a lot of the time on link building. While they're already a big brand and they already have a lot of links and Google already likes them and they have the chance to rank for anything, you know, they 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 want to rank for because Google likes their brand, people are looking for their brand, right? So, so everything is good. But they focus on more link building while, you know, like firing it on a structure which is not optimal. And, and um, so... Let me give you a different metaphor. It's it's like you, you also don't build a house in the swamp, right? Um, you need a solid structure, a solid foundation to build a house, right? And now you basically, you build a house in the swamp and you, you know, even if you get like very good and valuable links to it, they won't really, uh, they won't really reach their full, um, uh, the, the maximum of impact these links could actually um could, could actually serve, right, um, because the structure is suboptimal. So I'd, I would always first, you know, like fix the structure of the best possible structure that these new links that I'm acquiring, um, where I'm spending a lot of money and time on, you know, can, uh, and falten, uh, can, uh, sorry for the German word, can um, <laughs> blossom, now it's also a bad word, sorry, uh, <laughs> can, as a, they, they can really, um, um also, oh, I'm sorry, English is hard. Um, but you know what I mean, right? As they can, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, there's no, there's no point in constantly. You're looking for a different it's analogy so here. Um, but but you, you talked about a great analogy anyway. Um, building a house on the swamp. Um, you, you're you're not going to perhaps build an additional level on the house um, mm -hmm. if it's in the swamp. You you need to actually sort the foundations out first of all, and then you mm -hmm. can keep on going higher after that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you spend a lot of money and time on these on these external links, right? And 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 they can't really Google is like, oh, I like this, but but with the structure, I can, just can't work with this, right? But if you have a great structure, yeah. these links will 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 be will have so much more power, right? Um, and so I would always do this first before um, I'm actually would go about like 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 putting more external links on this. Yeah, a lot of great thoughts, a lot of great information there. Uh, you can find Marcus Tandler over at write.com. R yte.com. Marcus, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2022. Thank you so much really for, for being a guest. Thank you uh, for me uh, inviting me as a guest. Thank you so much. Check out the rest of the content from SEO in 2022 over at seoin2022.com. <laughs> <laughs>